Spiritual Life Center. Transforming lives as we love, serve, and remember who we are. One heart. Glad you all made it. I uh, was trying to figure out how best can I make this evening flow where we let the plants sing again because everybody's, I want to, are the plants going to sing? Yes, they're going to sing. And um, I even have a rock that's going to sing for us too. And for those of you who weren't there at my eco musicology program, which by the way, let me explain it briefly again if we forget, have forgotten, um, my nephew will get the explanation up there. So Ecomusicology is something that I invented 30 years ago when I was an environmental educator. And basically, if you break the words down, eco comes from the Greek word oikos, meaning hearth or home. And musicology, or the music part, comes from the muses, which means of or from the animal's mouth. So I had to uh, break it down even more. If you could see right there, basically, if you break down the animal... Because a lot of people think, oh, just animals are sentient. And people are figuring, oh, yeah, plants are sentient too. But a lot of people don't realize that water, fire, even a chair has slightly got some consciousness, believe it or not. Anything that, you know, as you can see, breaking it down, anima means, uh, or animal comes from anima, which to have a soul. And soul means life. Life means to have breath or to pulse. And to pulse is vibrating. So we can even prove right now, and the ancient peoples and indigenous people have been telling us all along, you know, the rock people, the water people, the bird people. Um, I have a little device for those of you who haven't seen it before. It's called a midi sprout that I will go ahead and turn on right now. And this rock, I'm just, I'm loving this rock right here because this is the rock that holds that door open for every one of us coming in, setting up and breaking down. And I'm, it's, I know it's such an underappreciated rock, but not only is it a great rock to hold the door for us, it's also holding my mic stand up because it's a little too heavy on this side. But I also found it has a lot to sing and say. So I'm going to let you experience. This rock had, had to share a little message with us. And the beauty of nature, like rocks and such, is that they, they teach us that, you know, we need to stop trying to control everything and tripping on, you know, always having to make everything fit, and in, you know, in this place and in that place. And this is what it has to say right now. Now, I have noticed, because before you were all here and I didn't have the mic here, it just started singing it all the way. But next to all this electronic gadgetry, it needs a little booster. See, watch this. I'm going to touch the rock. That's funny. It doesn't want to say anything right now. Actually, uh, did something get disconnected? There we go. You know, it's not just people that can be stage f f frightened or, you know, have stage fright. <laughs> um, you know, it may start singing in a bit. <laughs> that is so funny. I love it. Uh, nature just lets us know who's in control, right? <laughs> Make me look bad, that's right. But you've all heard rock sing before. <laughs> well, you know what? We'll come back to it, because maybe it just wants me to shut up and move on. So uh, what I did with this evening, and in the next slide that you're going to see here, um, of course, I'm incorporating all the vibrations of music, because life began with sound. And of course, all the genuses of the planet um, art take part in that. And if you listen to this slide right here, the mantra, Om, it's ancient. And each aspect of it, it's, it's part of a trinity. And each aspect of it represents a different part of that trinity. So the Om part represents the beginning and the end 
of of life. It's actually the beginning and the end of Trinity. And it is part of the crown chakra. And a lot of times it will be sung while the sun is up and thinking of the sun. So it's stellar aspect would be the sun. And as you move down into the next, or not down, I'm sorry, it's actually all part of the, it's all equal. But in the next aspect, the awe actually has to do with the divine love. So it's actually coming from the throat chakra. A lot of people think that's going to be right out of the heart chakra, but there is the part that we have to think about combining the mind and the heart to make it one. And that is actually um, the, the part, the divinity. And then when you move into the um part, the um sound actually refers to getting beyond duality. And it has to do with the, and it's coming from the heart chakra. So this is part, this is a big lesson for us humans right now is to start living back from the heart. These were all the teachings from all the ancients and many people of today still trying to teach that. But it's, it's part of oneness and understanding oneness and stability and eternity. And So as I was mentioning that the OM, you're, you're kind of, when you are actually doing this mantra, you're thinking of the sun and that beyond the earth. And I'm going to set this evening up for all of us to experience. We're going to go from the outer realms, the sun, into the earth and all the life forms of the earth and then into the self. And, and you'll get to see how this all unfolds. So I'm going to start off with the fire rugs. And... Fire rogs, rogs, or a rog is a scale. And I had mentioned in my eco-musicology program that um, in India, they'll have specific scales for certain times of day, certain seasons, certain um, equinoxes, and they're only sung in the morning or in the evening. And I'm going to actually play through this, a series of fire rogs that represent each section of the day. And I actually had some, a midi sprout when I was in Yosemite hooked up to a rock that was exposed in the middle of the river, of the Merced River. And interestingly enough, I found that when the, it was partially cloudy and when the sun was shining on it, it was singing a lot. And then the clouds would come over and, and cover the sun and shade it and it got subdued. And then the sun would come back out and it would start singing again. So it just reminds us, I mean, how much the sun is energizing us all. So I will be playing these, the series of rocks with the backdrop of NASA's video and frequencies of the sun. So these sounds you're hearing are the actual frequencies of the sun, which are about 107 free, um, hertz. But things are changing. It's not, it doesn't always stay at that frequency.
So in this next portion, I'm bringing in all the life forms of the earth and I'm having my trusty orchid that has been a great uh, bandmate for a while now to join me. Now, even though it is winter and she doesn't have her summer best on, she's still beautiful on the inside. And uh, this is, real quick, the midi sprout that I have her hooked up to. Um, there's these guys out of Pennsylvania, I think, that have developed this device. MIDI stands for Musical Interface Device. So basically this little box is set up with these little electronic, like a TENS unit, you know, that you put the electrical currents through you. Well, it's receiving the frequencies coming out of the plant and translating them into a musical note. Each frequency will have a specific tone. And so this is what you're going to hear. working just perfectly about an hour ago. I do, you know, I was thinking, you know, how I could introduce this particular piece, and I'm thinking, you know, I have no idea what it's going to sound like. Uh, I'm letting this plant lead the show, be the conductor, and uh, they don't want, if they don't feel like saying anything, they won't. But here's the thing, you know, they're always saying things, they're speaking to each other, and... I'm going to do a little switch of root. Well, let's see. <laughs> right there was actually her. I did nothing. So um, she may want to start singing again.
I'm going to share a grasshopper song that is from the Maidu. Does anybody not know who the Maidu are? Great. I bet I'm actually really happy to see that I don't have to explain that. But um, the grasshopper song comes from, there's a melody, and the piece that we're going to play right now has been inspired by this melody where what they would do is they understood the cycles of things and they had, you know, they would have controlled burns all the time because they understood that as indigenous people, they were keepers of the earth and the land and they would create fires. And one of the things that they would do is in, a, in an area that needed burning, they would dig a pit in the middle of it and then they would all gather around in a big circle and light the fire and have it go towards the pit. And all the grasshoppers that were in the lawn or in the grass would um, obviously want to escape the flames and end up in the pit. Well, the grasshoppers eventually got in, they would go close it in, clear this nice patch of, of area, creating nutrients in the soil and helping burn off extra things like, you know, pesticide, pesticide like pests like, you know, ticks and fleas, so they don't get too rampant. And then they get a nice meal at the end, a nice protein rich meal. Now, a lot of people think, ooh, who eats grasshoppers? But you could actually go to a visitor center at some national park and get chocolate-coated ones, by the way. But at any rate, um, I, I, one little thing I wanted to share with grasshoppers, too, and this will be an opportunity for you to keep this in mind, too, is that, you know, the animals and plants, they're always, they're always saying things. We're just so taught not to hear them. But this is an ability we have we have that we can regain if we haven't got it back already. And the last time I remember doing the uh, animal, when animals speak, the call of the wild portion of my ecomusicology program. I don't know if any of you were here and remember, but there was a cricket that was in the back of the room that flew up there, flew up this middle aisle, landed on my shoulder right when I was talking about the sound and, and how sound and, and nature is healing, like the frequency of, of nature is 432 hertz, which is the same frequency as the color green, which is, hmm, you know, you go out into the forest, what color is predominant? It's green. So that's why, you know, color therapy, a lot of color therapists, you know, know about this, and a lot of people say, yes, go outside if you want to be healed. Um, so uh, I'm going to play the grasshopper song because I thought it was appropriate. And as I learned, especially from that day, that grasshopper cricket medicine is to teach with sound, to live with sound. And it was right when I started, I, I kept realizing every time I did an ecomusicology program that crickets were all over the place. I remember finishing one going outside and uh, there was some all around my car. And then I got in the car and I turned on NPR and there was, um, I don't remember, I think it was like last April. And I turned it on and there's... Um, a little news blip about how crickets or grasshoppers like all over Las Vegas last April. Did you remember that in the news? And I'm like, and then I get home and there's one right in the middle of my kitchen. So the point is, is that animals are always talking to us. You just got to pay attention. And, you know, you don't even, I mean, there's animal cards that you can get that are really cool, but you can just, you know, if you keep seeing a certain animal one day, look it up, but you just go, you know, what is, you know, uh, woodpecker medicine, or what is, you know, a sea otter, if you're out, or a river otter, you're at the river here, and you see a river otter, they're telling you, they remind you, be playful, or, you know, be patient, or, you know, go take a trip, so, or play lots of music, in this case, so we're going to play lots of music now, grasshopper speaking to us, and the little melody goes like this, and uh, my sister's going to help us, um, play along, but the melody goes, so that'll keep going, so we're going to play this, so anybody that would love to grab a shaker or a drum, there's a couple of instruments, there's lots of instruments up in the front here, you can join along, and uh, Paul is going to come up and uh, help with this too. In fact, you're going to pass out some of the. Do you want to set up the rhythm? Yes, if I can have one rhythm shaker maker just to give you all an example. And for those of you that don't want it, you can use your keys or your lap or your voice if you want to. But um, just keep a beat. 
And in this case, we'll keep it pretty simple. And there's drums, there's all kinds of funny noisemakers up here. And if some of you are more musically inclined and want to... But you can keep the basic one. And we'll see, we'll see where the grasshopper song will take us. And the way that's played, here, I can help you. Now, keep in mind, when you're playing along, just like in nature, you know, remember the lesson that nature tells us, you know, maybe, you know, you back off for a little bit and let the other noisemakers have a time, have their space. And then you come in at another time. So it's all about listening to each other and not over talking or talking over one another. So are we ready? Um, who wants to, oh, please don't play that. Anybody want to play that? So we can see. Yeah. Nobody took it. make sure everybody understood that creation is a participatory thing. We're all part of it. So um, thank you for joining in on that. And um, I wanted to leave time for questions and maybe, you know, we can get this rock here to sing. Cause you can't hear, it's got a beautiful voice. I wish you could hear it. Um, let me see if I can get that to happen. But in the meantime, does anybody have any questions? I have a sycamore in my backyard, and I sit in my hammock with the mini sprout hooked up to it, and I, yeah, I play with my sycamore tree. Is the sound louder the bigger the piece, like the bigger the tree? Or? Not at all. In fact, um, I have so many cool stories to share with this mini sprout. Um, one, okay, here's one. Uh, so, as you know, stones make songs too they vibrate they're living and i was with my other sister susan who no, has a lot of different stones precious stones and, and and various ones and i have some myself and i hooked it up i was really curious because the people that invented this they were just thinking of plants they call it midi sprout and their new one is called plant wave and i've been meaning to call them let them know that it's more things that you know rocks can do it too and so i had it hooked up to a piece of selenite and uh, I love sharing this story. So I headed up to this nice piece of selenite. And se selenite comes from the angelic realms. And so I was thinking, you know, these mini sprouts, you know, 
they're not super cheap. They're not over expensive, but they're not cheap either. And a lot of people want them. And I knew that when I shared it, a lot of people were going to, well, where can I get one of those? And I thought, well, I'll buy a bunch of them and maybe I can get them at my discount and then, you know, go ahead and sell them at what, at what the cost was. And, you know, I had the selenite on the midi sprout and it was singing in really high tones, you know, very angelic sounding. And when I said, oh yeah, you know, maybe I can make a little money doing that. And he goes, eh, like that real low like I couldn't even make and it had the red light like it had the little thing had a bunch of little white lights on it but then the when I said that when it came into you know bringing it into this material dense you know greedy mode it said like that so that was my big lesson so I could send you where to get the midi sprout and as soon as the new one comes out I actually am selling this one so if you do want it it will be much cheaper but um, let's see, without the electric magnetic frequencies jamming its juju. Oops. Yeah, that's, it didn't like being up against the microphone. A little, another thing to think about for us humans. I, if I could do all this without this electronic gadgetry, I would, but it'd be hard for you back there to hear. And, you know, when I was in Yosemite, just to, thinking of that one story with the mini sprout, see, I'm touching the rock. Just my energy going through the rock helped boost it. But before, I didn't touch it at all. Like, all that, that's its own. But I was... At, uh, right after last year after the other big fire that was there I actually I'm gonna put this on YouTube because I had the midi sprout and I found a tree right in the middle of the real burnt stuff in fact there was an area still smoldering and I um, this tree looked it was a, a, a young live oak tree and I thought it might be dead and so I thought well let's hook it up and see and I got a bunch of water and I started pouring it around the trunk you know around the, the tree and after a while, it started, like, coming back. Like, you know, I was just trying to say, you know, hang in there. You know, the rains are coming soon. Hopefully, you know, it appreciated that water that it got. I'd like to think that it did. And um, so there's a lot of cool stories about the mini sprout. Like, you know, my sister had, had been given a gift. It was a goldenrod quartz, big chunk. And it was, it was given to her. So, um... If I held it, and the midi sprout was on it, if I held it, it wouldn't sing anything. But if she held it, it would. And as soon as she handed it back to me, it wouldn't sing. And then I handed it back to her and it started singing again. And then she had another one that um, actually is polarized. So, you know, human beings aren't the only polarized thing on the planet right now. Sometimes there's rocks that are um, oriented to one direction or not. And if I, if we found that if we held it in our left hand, it would sing. But if we held it in the right hand, it wouldn't. And so um, there's all kinds of things out there that nature has to teach us. And sadly, we need electronic gadgets to do this now. Before, everybody knew this. It was like, of course, you know, of course the rocks are breathing. Yeah. Does each rock have a different um, song to sing? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because sometimes I mean, is the it like selenite a that I had. Signature for that particular rock? It, it just answered, did that answer your question? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's timely. So yes, they have their own signature songs. In and fact, the second question is, they're singing their song. Do they just keep repeating the same song, or does it change? Do you know what I mean? It's not repeating the same song. So yes, it changes. Okay. And I've noticed it change. Yeah, sometimes. So I'll tell it to sing. Go ahead and sing. Yeah, it started. I, I, yeah. I interject it, or inter it interjected. I didn't touch it. So yeah, sometimes they're really high, and sometimes they're really low. And like I said, it, you know, whatever other forces, like the sun shining on it, it would make it lighten up. Catherine, do you have a recorder there? Are you recording anything? The uh, out, everybody out in TV land gets to see this, and it's recorded. I think it gets on YouTube, right? It's put on YouTube. But it doesn't. The, it's, 
the repeat that it's going through is not because it's being recorded. No. That's the frequencies. Like I said, it's it's the device is just sensing frequencies emitting out of it, mm -hmm. and whatever frequency it'll, you know, each frequency it feels will attach it to a certain note. And this is just a very basic little MIDI box. You can get them a lot fancier, make them How sound much is like yours the violin. <laughs> we could talk about that later. You, wanna, you don't want to hear the rock <laughs> Now, this is legit. This one isn't, I'm not profiting. If I what? Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Hi, Catherine. Hi. Okay, so if take the rock, for example, can they... If we were to sing to it, would it sing back? Can we communicate? Oh, absolutely. So um, there's parts of the world, like um, there was this one, um, for some reason in Italy, they, they've they been doing this a lot. There's a place in Northern Italy called Daman here that, you know, they have it hooked up to plants and stuff a lot. And I, I noticed a couple of cool things with the plants, like with one situation, um, they had a GMO t uh, cherry tomato and a not an organic one, and she had them set up. They looked identical, and you didn't know which one was which. And she hooked up the midi sprout to one and let it go, see if it would sing anything, and it didn't. And it time lapsed after five minutes. It wasn't doing anything. So she thought, okay, well, so we'll put it over to this one, and it started singing right away. And then she said, okay, well, what do you think? is the organic one and what do you think is the GMO one? Well, obviously the organic one was singing, but she said, well, let's see what happens. So she clipped it back to the GMO one and it went ding, ding, ding. And then it started singing again. And I liked her understanding of it. She said that she, so did the rock, that it was, it, it forgot who it was when you think about like even us we're genetically modified we for we we don't know who we are we have so much history behind us and thing you know so much we've been lied to over the years that we're trying to regain back so we're like that gmo plant we're trying to relearn who we are and then we have to seek out the ones that are still organic we have to find the organic people and <laughs> hopefully have them remind us and they're there they're there i've met a few yeah Do the same kinds of rocks make the same sounds? Well, with this I mean, midi sprout... Would granite always have a certain sound? And No, because a frequency is a frequency, and anything on the earth... Well, first of all, the midi sprout is a very basic um, little device. It's just set up to have one musical sound the new ones you well actually i do have the ability to hook this up to a midi keyboard and i can assign different song uh, different sounds to it like if i want it to sound like a piano or a trumpet i could but um i did see this one um story where this german guy his wife was a green thumb and um the rock likes the story too because what happened was um he assigned, because he had a keyboard, and he assigned uh, words to the different frequencies because he noticed every time his wife walked by certain plants, especially the ones that were her favorite, though that she liked them all, but it would respond differently when she was around. Other people wouldn't respond, but this one, it would respond. So she, uh, he assigned um, Donka, which is thank you. So every time the his wife went to water it, it would go, Donka, Donka. <laughs> so... Yeah, so they they do talk, and actually I did see uh, The Secret Life of Plants. Have you ever read that book? Well, there's an old, old video that was uh, Stevie Wonder did the soundtrack way back in the, you know, they're wearing bell bottoms, so you can tell what decade. And um, there was a, they were doing this in Japan. They had a, a device hooked up, and it was, the plants were actually, um, mimicking the human being she was like saying i love you in japanese and it would go i don't you know and i don't remember how you say i love you in japanese but anyway it was mimicking her and um you know they can do a lot of things they can solve mysteries and murders actually they had this case where they had um 
assigned three people. They, or, they had one of them, they had two plants, and they told one person to kill the plant, take it, rip it up, stomp on it. And they had um, electrodes hooked up to both ones. And then the other two were to give it water and love and say, you're beautiful. And then they had some scientists that didn't see this all happen have to figure out who was the perpetrator based on the other plants' reactions as they came by. So the, the ones that just were, you know, saying, I love you and stuff, you know, the plant was just fine and doing its thing. And then when the, the, the perpetrator came in, it screamed. It actually had a sound that's like a scream. So, yeah. In fact, Mary Youngblood told me, you all know who Mary Youngblood is here. So she told me that um, her, when I was sharing this with her, she said, um, her, some friends of hers were up at the Redwoods in Oregon when they were going to clear cut and somebody had stuck some pro, some microphones into the soil and it sound, as they were being cut that it sounded like screams. I mean, it literally sounds like screams because they are, they're, they are, they're in pain. So any, I, any other questions? Well, I, I just want to share an interesting thing in my, in my anthroposophical studies with Rudolf Steiner's material because he did a lot of spiritual uh, research with the plant world, the natural world. And he, he says that plants experience ecstasy when they're plucked and pain when they're cut. So that's why, you know, like a real serious botanist, they will pinch off the dead stuff rather than cut off the dead stuff because that actually hurts the plants. Yeah. So um, it sounds as though that um, we might, are there any other questions? So maybe what we can do is we can let, let um, and you know, you can actually ask, you know, I haven't really, I've gotten a couple of different names, but you can actually ask a plant and, and you know, explain, you know, forgive me for my, you know, rudimentary ignorance, you know, I'm learning, but they, you can get a name. And I remember there was a tree, a really old, old, old cottonwood tree in, 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 growing in a school near my house that I used to love going, hanging out. It was really gnarled and you can tell it's been around long before all the houses and even the levees were there. And I remember tuning into her and she said her name was Heather. And, um, and I said, well, okay, Heather, you're, you're clearly a wise one. You know, have any, any message that I could use? And she said, just hang in there. That's, that's what I heard. So this is an opportunity for you. You know, you can do it musically. You can even just sit, you know, you don't have to go far. You can go into your backyard. Even if you leave in a, live in an apartment, there's, I'm sure, trees and birds around you, and you can have that time to connect to them. And share this with your young people in your lives because there are too many of them are losing that. They All they know is, you know. So um, I think that what I'll do is we can maybe wrap it up unless there's any other questions. Is there any other questions? I think we can uh, wrap it up with, we can have the cricket going and see if, if Aya, oh, you want to keep going? We'll see. Maybe we'll wrap it up with our rock, our trusty door holder <laughs> and microphone holder. Thank you. Spiritual